Welcome to Electron Online. Our next segment on centroids and center of gravity has to do with forces on submerged surfaces. To understand that a little bit better, we first should go and explore what we mean by pressure inside a fluid or underneath the surface of the fluid. Farther down you go inside a fluid, the greater the pressure you experience. It also depends on the density of the fluid. To understand that a little bit better, let's go look over to the drawing on the right. The amount of pressure that you experience at a certain depth, let's say depth Y or H, we use both H or Y to indicate the depth inside the fluid, also realize that we consider that to be a positive direction. The further down you go, the greater the positive number of depth. To figure out what the pressure is here, what we're going to assume here is that the pressure depends upon the weight of the water above that certain point in the water or in the fluid. Could be water, could be any sort of fluid. In other words, we understand that the definition of pressure is equal to force divided by area. So how much force is experienced by this region inside the fluid this far down below the surface? Also keeping in mind that we're going to ignore atmospheric pressure at the top. This is only what we call the gauge pressure, the pressure experienced due to the water pressure, not the air pressure above the water. Since pressure is force divided by area, we can assume that the force can be contributed to the weight of that water column. So this would be equal to the weight of the water column divided by the area, and the weight can also be expressed as m times g divided by a. That would be the mass of the water times acceleration due to gravity divided by the area of that region right there. Now we also know that the density can be expressed as mass divided by volume which means we can solve this for mass. Mass of a fluid can be expressed in terms of the density of the fluid times the volume of the fluid. So taking this equation, we can then write that the pressure is equal to, instead of m, we can write density times volume. We still have the g there, and we have the a here. Now the volume of this water column is equal to the cross-section area, area a, times the height or the depth. We can say y or h, let's use h in this case. So this can be written as the density times the area times h, so the volume is area times h, times g divided by the cross-sectional area. And right away you can see that both areas can cancel out, and you end up with the pressure inside the fluid is equal to the density of fluid times the depth of the fluid times g. And this is an important equation to know in this segment. So here we can go back. The pressure at this location depends upon the density, the depth in the water or in the fluid. In this case, we use the variable y instead of h. It doesn't matter. And then the acceleration due to gravity, assuming somewhere on the Earth, it's about 9.8 meters per second squared. Now that we know what the pressure is, we can now go ahead and figure out what the force is on a submerged surface. Imagine a surface underneath the water, let's say that the water line is right over here, and we want to know the force on this wall. We know that it's due to the water pressure pushing against the wall. We know that the force is equal to the pressure times the area. The problem is that as you go further down into the fluid, the pressure increases. So it's not a constant pressure, it increases. So we need to figure out how to find the force by either integrating or coming up with some neat techniques on how to figure out the force on a submerged surface. Well, that's for the next video. Now that we know what the pressure is, and again, this is what we call the gauge pressure, not the total pressure. The total pressure, we would have to add the additional atmospheric pressure above that adds the pressure down at this point. But we're going to ignore that for now. We're just going to uh, take into consideration the pressure caused by the fluids and not by the air above. So that's the concept. Now let's go look at the next video where we can figure out how to find the force on a submerged surface.